now does that because I because I've never uh, done it but then if you do does that tag me on my um, Facebook um yes sir if if you you could just share it okay we are live now you can share it on your Facebook brother Larry. okay yes sir all right we are live I want to thank everyone for tuning in to a very special edition of off the record the people's podcast this evening we have a very great and illustrious guest brother Larry Muhammad Dr. Larry Muhammad. First of all, assalamu alaikum, sir. Josh. Yes, sir. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to uh, have a conversation with us, to give us some information as well as inspiration. Uh, first of all, thank you all for tuning in. My sister Mir Miriam says assalamu alaikum and sister Teresa Pearl, assalamu alaikum. Okay, brother Larry, um, for those who don't know, you were the director of Muhammad University of Islam in Chicago for quite some time and as well as an educator for quite some time, but we're gonna get, I wanna hear you so you can give us the exact times and dates. I just wanna thank you as a fellow student, a former student of Miami University of Islam for your sacrifice, for the sacrifice of your family, for trying to educate, we're well, not trying, but educating myself and my siblings as well. Thank your family for their sacrifice as well. Thank you, appreciate that. Yes, sir. But Larry, so when did you- For having you as a student. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. <laughs> Brother Larry, when did you first hear the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad? Um, you know, like a lot of people, when I was in high school, reading different books, and a lot of us read uh, Malcolm X's book. That's probably the first time I came across um, learning about the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and and Minister Farrakhan and Malcolm and in the history of the nation. So like most people, I, I came across the first uh, reading um, about Malcolm the history of um, the nation during the civil rights and the black power struggles and eras. Mm. Uh, that was the first time, but a more serious level um, when I went, went away to college for my first year, you know, I got more involved and came across uh, the message to the black man. And um, uh, I was also, actually I should say even before that, even before college, um, I came across the final call. Mm, mm. Cousins, um, my uncle actually, great uncle, mother's uncle used to actually listen to the minister on the radio and my cousin and I, my cousin Sean, who's also in the nation, we um, we started talking about it because his grandfather also listened to the minister on the radio, and we came across the Final Call newspaper. And so uh, that was even before I went to college. Mm. So probably in seventeen or eighteen. That was the first time I came across 18. And uh, then I actually saw Minister Farrakhan speak at the Kill Opera House in St. Louis in 1988. And um, I was, I guess, 18. Mm -hmm. So um, I tried to get my friends to go with me. I ended up going by myself because, you know, people were afraid to go. Mm. You know, yes, sir. You know, so they were like, you know, I'll, you know, I'm gonna, I'll get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. So I ended up, and um, you know, so that was the, that was the really the beginning. And within that same year, I went away to school and started reading much of the black man. Um, and then I ended up coming into the nation about getting into processing about a year later mm. at the age of 19. So. Praise be to Allah. Okay, excellent. And what, what, what school, what college did you go away to? Um, the first, the first I went to was, because uh, I came into, um, the first college I went to was Southern Illinois University in Carbondale. Mm. You know, so I was coming from the St. Louis, East St. Louis area, 
And uh, most everybody at the colleges in Illinois, including SIU Carbondale, were from Chicago. So, you know, I was able to run into some brothers, uh, not in the nation, but from Chicago. So they were familiar. One, one friend in particular, his uncles were in the nation. And uh, so that lesson because I built a relationship with him and um, so he knew he knew about the, the nation and, and the message of black man so I was able to talk to him and, and to relate you know and learn a little bit more and later on I built a relationship with his uncles even up until um, you know recent years currently so, so, so it was SI later I left college like a lot of us did back then, mm. <laughs> college and I ended up sitting out for about a year, year and a half, and I was just soldiering and uh, traveling around with the minister because the minister was doing the Stop the Killing tour. Okay, okay. A lot of us were um, traveling around, especially from the St. Louis Mob. We were traveling, St. Louis Mob. We were traveling around as the minister was doing the Stop the Killing tour. So I sat out about a year. I went back to college and I ended up going back to University of Illinois, um, Champaign Urbana, just a couple of hours south of Chicago. So, um, yeah, so that that, that kind of shifted and, and started my relationship with, um, you know, being in Chicago and, and going to Chicago, whereas a lot of people thought and some still think that I'm from Chicago. I'm not from Chicago. You're from St. Louis. Right, I, I've, okay. just been, I've just been going to Chicago since, you know, 18, 19 years old. And when I was in college, I would go up there, you know, spend time at the moms. Okay, yes, sir. I'm familiar with the fight in the line night. Um, Sister Teresa says, uh, salam. Thank you, Brother uh, Willie. Brother Victor, Assalamu alaikum. Brother Ashad says, the great Dr. Larry. Waalaikum salam, Brother Ashad. My sister Naima says, Assalamu alaikum family. Waalaikum salam, Sister Naima as well. My next question is, how did your your parents feel about you accepting the teachings? Uh, well, you know, my parents, like like a lot of uh, parents from that era, they're very familiar with the nation. But the nation had um, the nation had a really serious reputation. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. People, so people either, you know, it was it was either a really it was a great respect period from everyone but a lot of people had a great fear for the nation mm, mm. and so uh, it did help that my my mother's uncle my great uncle listened my uncle george he, it did help that he listened he was a very educated uh effective person in the community he was a church uh, administrator <clears throat> and uh so that that helped um, but they were, you know, a little bit taken aback. You know? mm, mm. Uh, and actually, I, I, I should say they, they kind of knew that I was being drawn to Islam because I forgot when I was in church at the age of about 16 or 17, my pastor in a Baptist church, his good friend, his best friend was a Muslim. Mm, mm. He was a Muslim imam, and I don't remember his name, but he visited our church once and he spoke. And after that, um, you know, I had an interest in, you know, the word, you know, because he talked a little bit about the Quran, the difference between the Quran and the Bible. So that was, that was interesting. Um, but yeah, my parents, they didn't, they didn't really fight me about it you know I had a, I, I didn't have much conversation with my father you know he's kind of you know low-key when it comes to things like that um my mother you know we had a couple of a couple of conversations and but she knew that me she knew me so she knew that I was very convicted about things that I believed in and that I was serious about um so you know, we had a couple of little spouts, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. But, um, but overall, overall, I think they were, were fairly supportive. You know, they allowed me to do, you know, what I had in my mind and heart to do. You know? Okay, beautiful. Um, how did you get into education? To becoming an educator? Yeah, actually, 
the nation was really a, a played a big part. Mm -hmm. When I came into the, I went away to college. I was actually studying aviation. Okay, um, okay. I wanted to be a pilot, fly airplanes. Started in high school doing that. So um, then, when I came to the nation, I also had, I also had an interest in being an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. my own business, and dealing with finance. So I. Started my major, when I went to UVA, I switched my major to, um, well, I attempted to switch to uh, finance. And then I had a counselor, a lady, a sister from South Africa. And she convinced me to um, look into education. And I was already becoming more interested in, in reading and learning and researching because reading the message to the black man was the first time that I actually got really serious about reading books. Mm, mm, mm. The other time I remember being serious about reading books was when I was in high school doing my um, term paper and I did my term paper on uh, Cointelpro and their involvement with, okay, uh, okay. with Dr. King's assassination. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So reading the message of the black man to reading other books at that time, um, Haki Madhavudi's books, um, Francis Quest Welsing, a lot of, <laughs> lot of major black scholars and historians, I started getting deep into that. And so that, that gave me an interest in learning and education and research. Um, and so then I switched my major to education with the plan on teaching for a little bit while working on my MBA. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I never did do that. I ended up staying in education and getting all of my degrees in education. And, you know, fast forward now, I'm getting, you know, starting to get back more into finance, you know, and entrepreneurship. I've, I've started, created a business, and, you know, we, we can talk about that. But, but I'm kind of going back to my interest in finance and, Combining that with education. Praise be to Allah. Excellent. And Sister Aisha from Chicago says, Somebody can family. Wake up some Sister Aisha. And Sister Aisha, thank you for being a plug. Um, Dr. Larry, how um, how was it teaching at Muhammad University of Islam going from becoming a, a, a teacher to actually going to running the school? How was that? Um, you know, believe it or not, I, I always knew that I was going to um, be involved with administration at the school. Um, you know, if not even also directing the school. Because when I was at U of I, um, visiting the mosque and the school, of course, Sister Shelby, uh, she hired me. And so my first job out of college was a teacher Okay, 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 that's beautiful. You know, that was uh that was when you and you were there and you know and your siblings and everybody. So um and I don't know if you remember, I started doing administration pretty early because I started under Sister Eugene. Mm, mm, no, sorry, no. When uh Sister Shelby hired me, she was actually transitioning out to doing some other things, research and doing some traveling with Mother Panetta. And the minister brought Sister Eugenie Muhammad in to run the school. Mm. So uh, the nation was very busy back then. You know, it was a lot going on in the nation. You know, I mean, you all were, were growing up. I mean, your father at that time was the Supreme Captain. He had just come in as the Supreme Captain. There was a lot of change taking place in a lot. Um, so under Sister Eugenie, she gave me my first opportunity to do administration by putting me over the elementary department. Mm, mm. That's when she created an elementary department, high school department, school department. Uh, Sister Tawana was over the preschool. Yes, yes, sir. And I was over there. So, uh, so I started doing administration pretty young. I mean, I was only maybe 26. Mm, you know? mm. um, and teaching, teaching, started out teaching and teaching uh, 
fifth and sixth grade, you know, uh, a lot of those famous characters, you know, that you grew up with. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, um, so yeah, that was that, that was beginning with the administration at MUI, teaching and administration. And then um, I was working on a master's while teaching at MUI. Um, and so when I left to work on my doctorate, that's when I started getting other experience working in uh, public school and charter school. Had a lot of experience doing that before coming back to MUI. Mm. Okay, excellent. And how 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 was it to have a supporting wife? How important was it to have a supporting wife with you during that? During like you know when you working at MUI, I, I don't know what you all were, you know how the pay was, but it seemed like everybody was basically like getting paid charity and stuff. How could you do that with a family? Put me on. <laughs> um, it was tough back then because we were being paid. Let me see. You know, and I know I remember my wife, she taught. She was very supportive, but she also taught there at MUI. Yes, sir, of course. I remember your wife was yes, sir. Um, part of that time. Um, not the entire time, but a good portion of that time she was teaching there as well. That helped for both of us to be teaching. You know, um, you know, two charities is better than one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> um, but you know, we back then it was a it was a, it was a high spirit. You know, we mm -hmm. made it, we made it happen. Um, so you know, we really did. It was a little different from now. Things changed a lot, not only for the nation, but also you know in the world. Um, you know, we, it's a whole different subject, but, you know, we know and understand the devaluing of money and yes, inflation and the cost of living and all of that. Uh, so things have changed a lot. That. So we back then, but it was a high spirit, you know, it was a very high spirit and that helps, you know, where you just, because I came out of U of I, but when I was at U of I, I was... You know, I had a study group, started a study group. I had the minister on okay. you know, yes, sir. <laughs> um, you know, so I was doing that. so that that really, you know, when you're doing that, you really don't think about difficulty. Mm. Um, you know, when you really when you're really uh, motivated and you got I mean, just like when your father when Abdul Sharif was the spring captain, it was it was such a strong um, spirit and such a such a powerful presence mm -hmm. that that really just you don't really think about the difficulties and the challenges. You know, you just kind of just blow right through it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, um, I mean, you have it. Like for example, I remember Brother Abdul and I, Minister Abdul Muhammad. He was teaching there um i guess he came maybe a year or so after i did and we started um you know an online store mm. you No, know, it's it was in the final call some time ago back at, in that era we were one of the first people in the country in the world to create an online store yes sir. Yeah. we created an online bookstore called the noi uh bookstore the same year Amazon started. Okay, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, um, yeah. So it was. It was a, we were. We were motivated, you know. So we were. We were finding other ways to be creative. And uh, when, I, when I was working, I was working on my master's at the same time. Had a fellowship that helped me. Mm. Yeah. So we just we just hustled and you know made it happen. Praise be to all. Thank you. My sister uh, Miriam says she appreciates Brother Larry and his beautiful wife, Sister Dion, who was one of her favorite teachers. You all were very kind and dedicated. Um, what was your greatest joy as a um, um, working at Muhammad Grace of Islam? Well, 
you know, it's kind of, um, I think it's something that I need to, and we need to revisit with uh, the nation and the nation's history. And um, I talked to Brother Akbar a few years ago and talked a little bit about this. You know, there's a lot that we need to, um, to do in terms of reconnecting um, you know, bringing out that aspect of our history. Yes, sir. That we kind of, we, we, we get so busy in everyday work and, and moving and pushing the program that we kind of forget that um, the family and, and all of what we built and what we had and yes, all, of, all of the families growing up and being together, we kind of, kind of, we kind of let that go, and that's something that we have to reconnect with. Yes, sir. And um, build on, um, you know. So with the with the nation's history, when I came into the nation in St. Louis, the part of the history of the nation that a lot of people don't know is that after the nation fell and people went their different ways, Brother Akbar ended up in St. Louis. And, and the, you know, minister was still in Chicago. Yes, sir. So when the minister started, obviously he connected with Akbar. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so the nation had a strong presence early days in St. Louis. So St. Louis, St. Louis, we had we owned our mosque. I think probably before the final hall building was purchased. Mm, mm, mm because uh, Brother Akbar bought the building in, a, in an auction or maybe you know, around the same time, I don't know. But it's but our, our history was strong. So when I came into the nation, it was like the nation, it was very connected to the to the history of the nation in terms of, like to me, it felt like the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was still around. Mm, mm, mm. It just had that, it had that feeling to me. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Nowadays, you know, you run into people who may have been in the nation in the old days, and maybe in the early days, and it's almost like I get a little offended sometimes because it's almost like Elijah Muhammad. You know, it's like who is that? You know, mm, 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 mm. like like it's like we have no connection to our history. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. To uh, the power that. Uh, this man had and created and how the minister reestablished that. And so yes, when sir, I yes, sir. that was surreal wrong. You know, um, I was there when the, the official opening of the uh, National Center. I was a student at uh, at uh, U of I in Champaign. So I came yes, up with so those those periods were um, pretty significant, you know in terms of giving a, giving a real strong base and foundation. And so, um, so I kind of had that where I believed in, for example, like the period of time we live in now, the economic blueprint of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is needed more than the other period. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, but we're so caught up with the politics of this world, you know, and the politics of the two parties and, and how black people have gotten sucked up into this democratic yes, sir. Agenda, yes, sir. Yes, sir. agenda and all of this stuff is just is just so lost. Yes, sir. You know? And um, so that's back in the back in the early days of some of the period you were talking about when you were at MUI and I was teaching there. You know, we were really strong with believing in an economic blueprint, um, the Exodus program that the minister launched. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, and build, build unity. Yes, sir. You know, building, build, building a nation, building a civilization. You know, you don't even people, you don't even hear people talk about civilization anymore. That's right. That's right. And so, uh, so yeah, so we have to reconnect with that because that's what gave us 
you know, the, the strength and the focus push through. Praise be so Allah. Uh, what do you do for fun, uh, Dr. Larry? <laughs> Good question. Uh, you know, I, I, I do, I do like to um, golf, um, but I've been so busy lately, I haven't been able to do much, but I'm going to get out there and, and if, if uh, anybody is uh, out there, or brother Dion, I'm supposed to be connecting with him soon. <laughs> I, was about, I was about to say, I was about to say, yes, sir, Dion's down there. I told him I was going to connect with him soon and um, do some golfing because I but you know, one of the things that uh, that I've been doing a lot, and we'll have to reconnect on this later because this is something that I want to really start to build from an education perspective. Is I get, I spend a lot of time and I enjoy um, learning. Like I said, I have interest in finance. And so I've become um, like a technology or blockchain enthusiast. Mm, you know, mm, 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 I enjoy you know, I enjoy learning about technology and where yes, technology sir. is going in the future. Um, and I, I'm into blockchain and, and uh, cryptocurrencies and yes, sir, yes, sir. So, so I, I do spend a lot of my a lot of my free time I spend doing that because that is something that I want to educate people on and and tying that into like I said, where we're supposed to be right now with the economic blueprint. Um, but in the meantime, I've also started, you know, another business. And so that, that's keeping me busy. Thanks, uh, And thank you for your honesty and your transparency, uh, Dr. Larry. And thank you all for watching the People's Podcast. My sister Naima says, preach. So Naima just puts her hands up in the air like that. Thank you all for watching. My next question is, what advice would you give to future fathers? Fathers, um, that's a good question, and I know, uh, you know, just like with my sons, you know, and they're in in, in Chicago, and so they're they're future uh, fathers at that point where it's starting out. Um, I think this is an interesting time we live in and period. Um, I think we have to really get focused because you know we're just so distracted and there's so many distractions in the world and so much that obviously the time we're living in now you know i mean it's like it's 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 crazy you know it's, it's so much that consumes the people you know like with the with the virus that's going on yes, sir. You know, yes, sir. like it's like people viruses and plagues and <laughs> have been taking place for centuries. Mm, mm. But now all of the entire world is engulfed in this. Yes, so um, so when we live in, a, in an environment where all consume TV and media, yes, sir. I think we really have to get focused, you know? And so that's why I, the mess to the black man, the economic blueprint, it's like, those simple principles where I think the young people, I think you all have um, a very pure focus and spirit and um, commitment to uh, to the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and to uh, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I, I think you all, I believe, are really sincere and, so. and have a good back. You know, yes, sir. That and I, you have to. I, I think the fathers of the future just have to stay focused on that and not be tricked, pulled away by this political agenda. You know, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, and I understand it because, for example, it's like, like I said, I have. I have a doctorate. I could be doing a lot of different things, but I created a business, you know, because I wanted a cash flow business to do some other things. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I might look crazy to some people doing what I'm doing, but at the same time, I know the time 
Mm, mm. Um, I think the fathers, are, and I think I think a lot of brothers are have the right idea. Yes, sir. And um, they focus on creating um, wealth and being conscious of how they live, like Thomas Jihad, the ministers. Um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir on and mentor has been with him for so long how he talks about how to spend money live off a portion of your income yes sir other people teach out there you know like grant cardone and others it's important to to listen to those people and follow that you know and really save and save to invest not save to save yes sir yes sir the environment we're in, they lose their money mm, mm. because the money has no value. So it has to be saved to invest. Yes, sir. You know, um, so most of us have learned the hard way because we 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 got caught up in the way the world worked, and so we burned through money. <laughs> mm, mm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We burned through a lot of money. Uh, I know. You know that was one of them. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. I mean, I, I worked in I was making good money, you know, mm. um, even back in like 2000, 2001. You know? Yes, sir. Um, so, but anything, if you're not following the blueprint, you know, and you're not trying to uh, have ownership and save to invest. Yes, sir. And other than that, my advice would be to continue, um, you know, really reading and being as well-read and spiritual as possible. And I think most important with that is applying what you learn, because a lot of us learn so much you know, if you learn a lot, it becomes, you know, what's called a lot of significance. And so without without actually doing or taking action on it, mm. it works against you. Mm. Mm. And I think that's the challenge we I know it's the biggest challenge I have. Mm. And when when you know a lot and you learn like I was with my father few months ago and you know, he kind of laughed and agreed you know I've forgotten more than most people ever knew yes sir yes sir yes sir because from a young age I started studying and research and following you know and and um, but that but that can work against you if you don't take action yes sir and so when you don't take action and you don't continue building on it individually and as a group so as a group as a nation if we've talked and talked about and pushed so long for so much and we're not doing it that could work against us yes sir yes sir you know and it and it starts to in if you're carrying around a bunch of stuff and you're not actually you know if you think of it like a farmer i mean a farmer if he doesn't plant food nothing is going to grow, you know? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then even if it grows, if you take care of it and continuing to work the farm, yes, sir. Be, you know? And so, um, so yeah, it, you know, to avoid caving in and uh, self-destruction. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, um, take it real serious and, and, not so not not the type of series where you become extreme and you become crazy yes sir yes sir series and that have fun with you enjoy it and you live and you do it you know you don't just talk about it you just do it yes sir black people we have it's such part of our culture to talk about that yes sir <laughs> yes sir <laughs> It's like 
even when I do business and I and I, and I have white clients, it's like it, 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 it's a you know not to take anything away from our people, but it it becomes a lot easier. Mm, mm. Then when I'm dealing with my, you know, we're talking about and questioning a lot. Yes sir, yes sir, yes sir, yes sir, yes sir. Just do it, you know. And so, uh, so yeah, that would be my biggest uh, biggest recommendation is to do what you know you need to do, and don't hesitate. Don't carry around a lot of you know what what you've learned. Apply it uh, because if you don't apply it and you walk around with it and you're just talking about it, it's going to come back on you. Powerful. Oh. And even the minister said, you know, I mean, what we said, we believe what we attempted to do, you know, we don't follow through on it, it's going to come back on us. Yes, sir. It's going to come back against us. So, yeah. Okay, excellent. And thank you all for seeing the watch. Uh, Dr. Larry, um, what business do you do? Because you keep saying you have a business. What business do you do? Yeah, I, well, on one side, um, I wanted to stay involved with education. And so my interest in blockchain and uh, cryptocurrencies, um, I'm working on, kind of put a halt on it, I, I'm, I'm, but I'm working on um, a platform where people can learn about what the blockchain is and what cryptocurrencies are. Yes, sir. Uh, how important it is to, um, to become invested in it and uh, how it will become the foundation of the new internet, you know? Um, so that's something I'm looking forward to getting into. In the meantime, I, um, I started a, um, a mobile um, detailing business. <laughs> okay, okay, yes sir, yes sir. Um, and I did detailing through college and, um, you know, I was looking for a cash flow business to put into um, things that I wanted to, to do. You yes, know, sir. Yes, sir. That's Because this is an important time. The time we live in, it's important to have, have cash flow. Obviously, as we can see, people are unemployed now. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, so it's important to be in control of, of what you're doing. Um, so, I, and I have to give credit to a former MUI student um oh shoot i'm going blank brother um javon hey yes sir yes sir javon and, and uh, john who were at the school you know when you were there and, yes sir yes sir and their siblings later um asia and all of them but javon has a has a very successful mobile detailing business and i was telling him i did detailing in college and i was looking at some different businesses and um and he, he's you know we have to be able to humble ourselves and be able to look and and even the minister said that be inspired by other people and, and even by the younger generation yes sir and he was doing it and i talked to him and, um so you know i started up the business and it's doing well Praise be so uh, much. yeah so yeah, so that's that. Those are the two things that I'm kind of focused on now, um, and hopefully later at another point we can, you know, get more into the, uh, the blockchain education and that learning okay. platform. So, Excellent. Yeah, and so. thank you all for watching. I have just two more questions for you, Dr. Larry Muhammad, sir. My next question is, what um, what is some of the advice that the Most High Minister Farrakhan gave you while you were directing the school? um to help you through um you know the minister has um uh, it's interesting because it actually kind of relates back to what i was saying about the doing this and and just doing what you believe and what you say you believe yes sir that's, that's really that's really what i learned was the minister's secret you know he just he just moved out and took action <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, when you look at it, everybody just sits and looks at him, but it's like he just moves out and takes action. Yes, sir. You know, and we all did. But when I was at the school, I, I moved out and took action. 
and um, he supported me and, and uh, gave me, you know, backing. Um, and, you know, he, you know, he was always there to support me. And he said that, you know, what I, what I had in my mind and, and the vision I had, you know, was, was in line with the vision that he had, which was in line with the vision that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad had. And so, uh, you know, it was a lot that he said, um, you know, in whether it was visiting the school or whether it was their meeting at the National House or whether it was at the farm are in a meeting, you know, council meeting. Um, I think one of the things the minister said that I keep in mind, you know, the minister, when he, uh, he said that the questions that he had when he came to the nation, he started to, to find an answer. Mm, mm, mm. And, uh, if you think about it, it goes back to the question you asked about um, recommendation or guidance or advice for future fathers. Because yes, the, minister, the minister is very educated. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very well read. And, um, you know, he's, he's, he's intellectually, he's very high up there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so I think a big mistake along with not applying and doing and taking action, we don't read enough and we don't, uh, we don't, we're afraid to learn, you know? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's really like, you know, functional literacy. And so the minister, he doesn't have a lot of, tech, you know, um, he likes for people to, to to read and apply themselves. And back in the day in the nation, and you probably heard this, you know, they, they read a lot. They were always assigned books to read. Yes, sir. Um, and so, you know, that, I think I learned more from watching the minister do take action than just, you know, the list, listening to the key Pearls and wisdom, because those yes, were too. But I, but I was, I was always blown away by how he moved out on what he believed and what he, how he could take something, he could understand it, he could process it, and move out on it. You know, and uh, and he he has a lot of respect for for that. You know, for um, taking what you believe and and taking action. You know, however that shows up, you know, you can't judge people. And, and he and he was always very open to people doing what they had in their mind and heart to do and support them in doing that. Yes, sir. Um, but I just I learned a lot and I really appreciated it. Um, I remember this actually was not when I was director, but when I was working at MUI before, and I was working under Sister Eugenie, and I remember the minister looking at me and him saying, you know, the nation needs, you know, he said organization is a problem. Mm, mm. He said organization is a problem. And that was one of the things that inspired me to go and study and learn um, education, organization, and leadership, and management. Yes, sir. Um, because there is a right way to do it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, and somehow we somehow we always get into um, where you know, like I said, we, we debate a lot. You know, as though as though as though there's no right way. You know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. As though it's not known what how to do A B C X Y Z. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So. Uh, that's what I learned most in the ministry. You know, he just knew how to key in on on the problem, um, 
and and he applied himself. I mean, he 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 went and studied and read and and kept himself knowledgeable, updated, you know, on um, research. Even if you go back and look at the Savior's Day, all those Savior's Day were giving us assignments and giving us books to read. Yes, sir. He was trying to bring us up, you know, and I and I saw that, you know, um, he was asking us, the research team and others, to uh, to be more scientific, you know, to um, show the the evidence, you know, to prove the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I mean, here we are today. They're printing money like it's nothing, devaluing the dollar. When the Honorable Elijah Muhammad talked about it in the message to the black man that all of this would happen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so hopefully that answers. It, it did, it did, it did. But one, and thank you all for continuing to watch the People's Podcast. My next question for you, Dr. Larry Muhammad, sir, is what would you like your legacy to be? That's interesting. You know, um, asking me that, you know, I kind of thought back to the last question about the minister and um, and and his legacy, you know, and his concern for uh, you know what he's leaving behind. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, and you know, so I think for me. It's kind of a new beginning. Mm. You know? um, and I think in, in life, you have to be able to reinvent yourself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, you can't get, um, you know, you can't get trapped and locked down. Um, you can't get locked down to the world. And you know what people think, and what 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 it appears that we should be doing. And yes, sir. So yes, sir. What I what I what I would like to do is uh, go back to <laughs> you know, um, like I said, I'm reflecting a lot on when I first came in the nation. And I'm seeing now. Um, it always comes back full circle. Mm -hmm. So, so the same legacy that that I would like to focus on leaving now is really the same legacy I focus on when I first came in the nation. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. That is, uh, you know, being being able to apply what I believe and what I know, and the legacy of. I think it's I think it's going to be important to leave a legacy at this period of people who believe in what we have believed in and presented to the world. Yes, sir. I believe that to a great degree we've abandoned that. Uh, like I said in the beginning of the conversation, I think we've gotten caught up in the world and what's going on in the world. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Big world is complex, it's fast changed, we're all connected. And there's a lot. But what we've been taught is very important. So for example, the legacy, one of the things that I would like to do is see, and I was sharing this with my father, like the land that we have in Mississippi as a family. Mm, mm, mm. Um, start being productive and doing something with that. You know, um, because black people, we've lost a lot. You know, we moved away from a lot. Yes, sir. So now we're, we don't have uh, the wealth that we should have. We don't have the economic base and foundation. Um, and we do have, we do have a lot as a people scattered. Yes, sir. But when the world gets ready to go through what it's going to go through in the next few years, that's actually starting right now. Yes, sir. Going to test that. You know, so there's going to 
a need for people with 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 a mind uh, who can say, okay, you 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 watch now. We're all in this together. This is the message on the commercials during yes, the sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. We're all in this together. We're all, you know, it's like nobody was talking about we're all in this together. This all of a sudden started when Donald Trump came in office. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden there's an attempt everybody mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those who Those who don't like him and they fight, and all of a sudden it's an attempt to make everybody want. Mm -hmm. See, but we have to be, we have to stay aware and awake that people, and I, when I go out and I see our people, I see we need to be educated more than ever. You know, we need civilization more than ever. Yes, sir. You know, we need to understand economics more than ever. Um, we need that strong community more than ever. Yes, sir. You know, so I see all of that now. And all of what we work for and pushing and the Million Man March and, and the message of the Million More Movement, all of these things. Yes, sir. I hope we don't feel like that was all just for the fun of it. Mm, mm, mm. You know, that there was there was a reason for that. And it was really, really necessary. It was really needed, you know? And so when people, um, I'm talking, I guess the, I, I had the window open, but now I guess I should have turned the lights on. <laughs> yeah. I'm sitting in the, in the dark. But, but I guess just to answer that question, just flat out, you know, my legacy is, not letting go of that which we learned and we said we believe in and we were committed to because now is more more than ever people need that they need they need the proper education you know they need truth and transparency yes sir yes sir somehow we have to, you know in an age where it's like social media is just so much going on there's just so yes, many you know, somehow we have to reconnect and deliver that uh, pure uh, message and program. You know, so I want to, in my um, reorganizing and, and um, connecting my education with my economic understanding and the blueprint that that's that's the legacy that i want to leave and be a part of rebuilding on something so that when you have a economic collapse in the world that's coming we cannot be left out in the cold because it's going to feel really bad when we knew better and we knew what was coming it's going to be it's, it's going to be a bad feeling if we don't um, have something you know, as a, as a community, you know, at least have tissue. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> no, I'm being funny, but uh, it's just that that that's a good good example. You know, it's like people worried about tissue, but we were taught about what to store. That's right. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. It found when it when it hits you, it's like, oh man, that's. We already knew that. We already, yes, sir. Yes, sir. People don't know. And so if they don't know, they can go off of anything. So everybody's scrambling to get tissue. But that's not, you know, that's not the most important thing in your emergency kit. Yes, sir. It's the grocery store is closed. Why was it on, on tissue? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. The grocery stores were open the whole time. So they're running a run on tissue as though the central stores were going to be. But where did all let it come from? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I just want my legacy to be a part of um, this, the truth that we always were taught and held on to that that made sense and not, you know, some, uh, you know what I mean? Just, yes, sir. Uh, learning from the news and the media because that's 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 you know, that's where confusion comes. From. 
Powerful. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Larry Muhammad, for it's an honor that you would come on my podcast. It means so much to me. Thank you, family. Uh, once again, thank you for your sacrifice, your family. I'm so proud to see, of course, you and your wife thriving and doing well, but to see your sons is amazing. To see them just living life and just being so happy. <laughs> I'm like, man, that's so good. And um, one son's an alpha, the other one's rapping. It's just, it's just good to see him. I'm like, okay, go ahead, John. But Larry's just been doing great. Yeah, well, I appreciate it. It's good to connect with you. I'm, I'm glad to see you doing what you're doing. And, um, you know, I, I always had respect for you and your family and uh, you so Brother Sharif, Stephanie, you know, the good times we had and, you know, the history and Miriam and, you know, your brothers and sisters. So uh, I'm glad to see you doing what you're doing and uh, staying strong and taking the lead. <laughs> Praise be to Allah. Praise be to Allah. Uh, keep up the good work. Yes, sir. And thank you, Dr. Larry. And please get a greeting to your family. Yes, sir. I'll do that. Yes, uh, sir. Have some... All right. Have some like